Hey all, and welcome to today's video. And in today's video, we're gonna have another collaboration with Fifine, and they presented me with a problem they have with one of their product, and asked if I can try and solve it using open source, 3D printing, and CAD design. So, cue the intro, and let's start with the video, and let's talk about everything. Welcome back. So Fifen sent us their AM8T microphone, and that's like their uh, a medium range mic. Now that mic comes with a boom arm and the microphone itself. And they also send me the uh, low profile uh, boom arm, and they send me both of those arms for me to be able to adapt that thing we're going to design. We'll talk about it soon. Uh, but for now we don't need it, so yeah. So the problem with this mic, that they presented to me was that, as you can see here in the picture, the mic connects directly into the boom arm. And fancier mics, more expensive mics, come with a shock mount. Now the idea of the shock mount, and by the way, I'm not a sound expert, and at this point of time of me designing this stuff, I have no idea what I'm talking about. We learn more stuff um, on the design process of this video, but yeah. So they told me that some people were complaining that while moving the arm, touching the arm, even touching the desk, um, the mic will pick up all of those sounds. And that's what shock mount should um, uh, mitigate. So we're going to try and solve that issue with, a, with 3D printing and making something that is really cheap uh, because that's the theme of this mic. It's really cheap. By the way, I actually bought another one of these mics. Uh, this one goes going to my wife's desks, but I already bought one for myself. I really like it. This mic, I think it's about 60 bucks. We're gonna have links below. And it comes 60 bucks with the mic and the, um, the boom arm. And it's like USB-C mic, and also you can connect it with an XLR. So pretty cool features, but it's not about the review of the mic, it's about solving the problem. So let's unbox it. We're going to mount it to the desk and we're going to do a before test with, uh, with us touching the mic and everything. So we have some base point and then we're going to design the shock mount. We're going to assemble it and hopefully it will be better. We'll see. Okay, so let's take a look at the box. First thing we have is the mic itself with the forex style arm. And that's the, what makes the problem that we're trying to solve today. We have a USB-C, a table clamp thingy, and the arm itself. So let's move the box away and assemble everything. Okay, so now the mic is mounted to the table on the boom arm. Now we're going to do a bass recording, and I'm going to touch the table, move stuff while I'm recording, touch the boom arm, and move the mic. So let's do that. So this is recording on the AM8T mic, and now I'm going to touch the table. and I'm touching the boom arm and moving it. So let's listen to that bass line first and then we're going to move from there. So this is recording on the AM8T mic and now I'm going to touch the table and I'm touching the boom arm and moving it. And we're back. So we can see that we had a lot of background noises. We basically heard everything that I did and touched um, going through the mic. So now let's go to the computer, start working on the shock mount, printing it, and we'll come back here and assemble everything.
Okay, so for this project, we don't need a lot of parts. We need the 3D pr printed parts, as you guys see here. We need four O-rings. Those O-rings are 30 by 25 by 2.5. Um, if you have something close, it will probably work. And actually, you can um, test and play with different size O-rings. What it will do, it will change the tension between those two parts and we'll get to it when we assemble everything. Um, so those O-rings, you can use different O-rings, but that's what I chose to um, use. That's what worked the best for me. I'm also going to use this O-ring tool. You don't have to use it. They're very cheap. They don't have to use it, but it will help a lot assembling everything. Next thing we need to do is parts from the mic. So we're gonna start this assembly. There is two screws in here. I'm gonna ask, unscrew them. Now each screw come with the washer. So just make sure not to lose that. Keep it with the actual screw. We're gonna push the mic out and separate it from the um, fork stand thingy. So mic, we don't need it for now. And that um, stand, fork style stand has um, two rubber shock absorber fit here with two washers on them. So we need to use that. So we're gonna press it on the side and they will just pop out. And make sure the washers are on them. If you look here, it's kind of um, easy to miss, but there is washer. Make sure they're not stuck here. Sometimes they can just, from the pressure, get stuck to the um, fork itself. So now we have those two shock absorber rubber style uh, washers. What's interesting about them, one of them has this circular diameter in here and the other side has the same thing but bigger diameter. So just pay attention to that. So let's start with the assembly. We're going to take the mic um, um, connector first. It's this weird shaped part. We're going to take the O-ring and um, the shock absorber and the washer here and we're, we're going to make sure we have the smaller diameter facing up and we're going to press it with the smaller diameter in. So what you're going to see here, you see the smaller diameter going to circle going to pop in place here and we're going to make sure that it's all the way um, flashed here and we're going to press on it and that's how it should look. So same thing with the other one, we're going to find the smaller diameter circle. We're gonna make sure it pops all the way in and press it in place. And that's basically it. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to reverse the process we did before and we're now going to assemble this mic cover with those two screws we disassembled. So this cover has an opening up and an opening down. We need to make sure that the opening aligns with this touch button, this is an um, uh, RGB touch button. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to slide, we're going to slide that um, cover from the top. We might have to just press, push it a little bit and just open it a little bit so it will slide in. And then you have these circles that those rings are going to sit in. So you're gonna press it down until you feel it actually clicking into place. Now when it's clicking into place, you're gonna see that this shape is aligned with the RGB button here. And when you turn the microphone 180 degrees, the other shape is aligned with the mute touch button here. So now all we have to do is just reverse the process and screw those two screws in. Make sure they are tight. And now what we have to do, and this is going to be the 
kind of the hard part of this assembly is to actually try and mount the o-rings and make it float the mic float compared to the outer ring so the way we do we're going to do that this design here we have when we look at it from the top we have here this um stoppers here i don't know if that's the right term for it but i designed some shapes here to stop and hold the o-ring from sliding okay, so changing the camera a little bit so it'll be easier for you guys to see we're going to slide the o-ring through this hoop here and we're going to grab it by hand and we're just going to slide it on the button Now the button first is going to be the easiest thing to do um, just because of the uh, portion we designed there now that here is where the um this o-ring tool is going to be helpful we're going to try and fish that o-ring back back here and it's kind of hard to do it with one uh, with the one hand i'm trying to also show you guys but i'm going to fish it in hold it and i'm going to try to slide it like that so this is how it's going to look the o-ring is going to slide from the button and through this hoop and then going to slide on the top portion of this holder so now i'm going to turn the mic and i'm going to do the same thing here and i'm going to do it diagonally from this from the first one that way it will help it help hold everything in place so we're going to do it three more times and we're going to just go and speed through this process and that's basically it we're going to just move everything make sure it's all aligned and that's basically it that's the design of the shock mount okay so now we're done with assembling the shock mount what's really cool about this design so the shock mount is basically the, the outer circle going to be connected to the boom arm and with these o-rings acting basically as an isolator um, the mic itself is floating. We don't have a direct connection between the mic and the actual boom arm which connects to the table. So as you guys can see when I move stuff here you can see the mic moves freely and it's suspended by those o-rings and that's basically what's going to shock, um, absorb our, our, um, all of the sounds and stuff correlates to us moving around the mic. Now, while testing everything, we saw that the regular shock mount, sorry, the um, regular boom arm that comes with the mic uses um, 3 8 of an inch thread, while the low profile arm, which we have here, uses one quarter inch thread. So instead of have, having to buy adapters, and more stuff for this project. What I did is I made two different outer rings and one of them going to have one quarter inch and the other one is going to have three eighths of an inch thread. And because those threads are very thick, are very large threads, we can actually print them very easily and they will work perfectly. So most of the time, if you saw any one of my uh, recent projects, I all about thread inserts. But when we have threads that are not that functional, it just needs to hold something once and they're that large, printing them is a valid option. I'm not even talking about tapping them, just completely printing them. So we're going to have two different options, as I said, one with a quarter inch thread and one with a three eighth of an inch thread. So now let's continue. So now what we're going to do is we have the uh, one, uh, one quarter inch thread here and we slowly go on a thread. Now, this is plastic threads, right, guys, right? So at least the first few threads needs to be fairly, make sure that you are very straight, so you're not gonna cross thread everything, and do it very slowly. And after the first few threads, you can just spin it as fast you know, as you can, and you don't even have to um, thread it all the way in. You can just close this threaded washer here thingy, and then, everything is going to be held in place okay so this is now us recording with this shock mount so now i'm touching the table the same way moving my nails back and forth 
and I'm touching my fingers on the table. I'm also touching the boom arm. So now what we can do is we're going to go back to the recording and we're going to put them side by side and see if we see any change at all. So let's do that. So this is recording on the AM8T mic and now I'm going to touch the table and I'm touching the boom arm and moving it. So this is now us recording with the shock mount. So now I'm touching the table the same way, moving my nails back and forth and I'm touching my fingers on the table. I'm also touching the boom arm. Okay, so I have to say guys, after hearing the before and after recordings and even just showing you guys the sound wave itself visually, you can see the change is actually really, really huge. And I was surprised. I have not a lot of experience with sound, especially not with like actual mics. I never used um, a shock mount, so definitely I never even designed one before. And I was really, really surprised how just really, really small 3D printed parts with four O-rings can change this mic. Now this mic was great at the beginning. I really enjoyed it. But after adding that shock mount, I have to say, it moved it a few level up. I actually like this mic so much that I bought another one of those with my own money and I'm using it on my desk. So yeah, I'm very happy with this design. I actually was very surprised, kind of surprised myself that it worked so good. So I always thought it's a little bit of, I don't know if a gimmick, it looks, it makes it looks professional. I always thought it's something like that, but no, it actually works. We tested it and we saw it. So for a conclusion guys, Fyfen sent us the mic and presented us with a challenge. The challenge was that plenty of customers co contact them and said that without a shock mount, they can hear everything they do with a boom arm. When you touch a table and move it, all of those sounds go back to the mic. So with simple CAD design, four O-rings and some for the printed parts, we completely solved this problem. I have to say, I really enjoyed this project. I was really surprised with the outcome. I want to thank Fifine for trusting me with this problem and talking to me very openly and actually letting me solve it. It's really cool. Of course, all the files are going to be available for free for download in our Make Award and printables. So let's enjoy some pre-roll footage and we'll be back in a few. Six spool spins, the nozzle glows Layer by layer, creation grows Stepper motors hum, precision's art Turning dreams into a 3D jar From cat to life, it starts to rise A masterpiece beneath my So thank you for watching these videos. So as always, all of the files are going to be available on our Maker World and Printable uh, page for free. So you can download it and try it yourself. If you don't have a 3D printer and you still want to try it, I'm going to sell the actual printed parts on my store. And of course, link going to be in the description below. Thank you Firefine for sending me this mic and telling me about this project so I can try and solve it and show you guys the design process. I'm Tom and the Printing Pilots and I'll see you on the next video.